the big advantage to this location is uh, we're close to the interstate and we're close to the railroad so that when we get this plant in operation, we can ship by the cheapest route. Has it always been done for industrial use here? Not always. I think the Indians used to use this for something else. <laughs> it's been industrial as long as I can remember. Mr. Ogden, with all this industrial land around here, why did you ask for a zoning variance on the old McDowell farm to change it from an agricultural to a class three industry? Who told you I did? Well, didn't you say that you plan to donate part of that land to the township to be used as a nature preserve? Young man, you didn't answer my question. Well, I'll answer yours, though. I own that land. I paid cash for it. I've owned it for six years. Now, uh, who told you I tried to get a rezone? Well, we really can't say. But it's true, isn't it? I thought you kids were doing an article for your school newspaper on community business leaders. We are. And this just came up in our research on you. And we were wondering what you plan to build on the farm that would... Young man, that's strictly my private business. You kids are going to have to learn if you're really going to be newspaper reporters. There's a fine line between public information and private. And you just stepped over it. Have a nice day. Hey, what happened? This wasn't a story you went to get. No, it's a better story, and it's more important. And it's true. You should have seen the look on Ogden's face when we asked him about this stuff. I'm just too glad I didn't. Hey, come on, you guys. Basic journalism. Now, you say that what's in your story is true, but there's nothing here to persuade me of that. I mean, you got no dates, no public records. There's nothing but the hearsay. Mr. Taylor, McDowell Farm is the last big woods we have around Webster Groves. Yeah, my dad and I used to go camping there when I was a little kid. Wait a minute. What's that have to do with the story you've written? I mean, you say that Mr. Ogden is going to build some kind of a, a mysterious plant. All you know is who and where. When, how, what, why, just don't seem to figure into it. Does this mean you're not going to let us run the story? Look, Brad, as your faculty advisor, I can't let you print anything in the student newspaper just because it seems reasonable. Now look, all we can print is what we know to be true. Otherwise, people aren't going to believe the rest of what we print either, right? That makes sense. No proof, no story. Right. So hand in something we can print, and let's get the paper out, okay? Right. Sure. Oh, no. Not Mom, anymore. We need you. Please, you gotta. That zoning development your father was talking about, has he said anything else since then? He doesn't sit around talking about zoning all day, for Pete's sake. Like, what does Ogden plan to do out of the McDowell farm? I don't know. I gotta go. Could you ask your father? You kidding? He'd cream me if he knew I told you this much. Hey, listen. I'll see you later, huh? All right, who else? Well, Luke Robbins. His father's in construction. Mm -hmm. Bridget Nolan, real estate. Right. Toby Gunther, banking. Doesn't uh, Jimmy Alcott's mother work for Ogden? Try it. Right, right. Come on, let's go. Reporters, I'm flattered. Is this an interview? Sort of. Mr. Putnam, is it true that Mr. Ogden has just signed a new note for $400,000? <laughs> you sure you're not from the Wall Street Journal? Well, is it true? I think this is terrific. I wish they'd had this sort of thing when I was a kid. <laughs> Who knows where I might have ended up, eh? Is it? Now, look, kids. If you came in here for a loan for some sort of business, would you want me blabbing about it? Oh, then he did. I didn't say that. Look, why don't you leave business to us grown-ups and we'll leave rock and roll to you? Deal? Oh, say, I've got a meeting five minutes ago. If you'll excuse me. Why won't any of you answer straight questions? I said I've got a meeting. Good day. Oh, and Brad. Say hi to your father. Sure. Thanks a lot. We appreciate your honesty, Mr. Putnam. Lucas Tan. Right. I think you're the man I want to see. I'm Harold Knox. Mr. Ogden, nice meeting you. Hey, come on in. Oh, thanks. <laughs> what can I do for you? Well, John Hamilton uh, told me I should see you. I bought almost a carload of prime hardwoods left over from a, a job that I've been doing. I want to donate it along with the labor to put in a new gym floor. How does that sound to you? Well, it's very generous, but uh, we really don't need it. And our floor is only three years old. <laughs> you know, I think you're right. Well, you donated it, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did you know that? 
A picture in the athletic office, uh, dedication ceremony. Oh, right. That was just three years ago. <laughs> can you beat that? Well, you know, anytime I can do something for this school, I do it. I'm a real booster. That's good to hear. It's nice meeting you. We'll talk sometime. Great. Thanks for coming in, sir. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, you help the kids with the school newspaper, uh, faculty advisor, right? Brad Patterson and Janice Duckworth. <laughs> then uh, you do know. I knew we didn't need a floor. <laughs> Lucas, can you explain to me why these kids have gone and asked my banker about my private business? What do they want? They think there's a story in what you do. Now, with all due respect, I, I haven't seen any proof of that. Proof? You know, that sounds like... There's something shady going on. Mr. Ogden, I honestly don't know what's going on. Business. My business. Lucas, now you know, sometimes a deal hangs by some very delicate threads. If you put something in cold print, sometimes it makes it look like things are different than what they really are. You know what I mean. Mr. Ogden. How? I'll promise you this. If our school newspaper prints anything about your business affairs, I personally guarantee that every word of it will be the truth. Fair enough? Well, yeah. Well, I'm an honest businessman. And I think I've done a lot for this town. So I really don't think the high school newspaper should make me out as a candidate for the Who Scout. Oh, no, I'm convinced that there's no intent. Oh, there's uh, Jerry Stewart. Now, he's going to make it. The next time he runs for Congress, he's going to break all of his old friends trying. <laughs> Listen, Hamilton, will you talk to the kids? I'm sure there's some kind of sensible middle ground in all this. They're just messing around in areas that don't concern them. Don't you agree? Well, of course. I feel it. Okay, a big chemical plant out on that farm. I doubt it'll be very beautiful, but is it illegal? Yes. Well, the way they're doing it. You see, they're trying to get it in without filing an environmental impact report. Well, how can they get away with it? The Zoning Redevelopment Commission has the legal power to waive the impact report if they want to. But they're supposed to hold public hearings. And they haven't held them. Well, they held these public meetings, but they didn't tell anybody that the chemical plant was going to be discussed. So nobody came. Then tonight they had a secret meeting and approved the new plant. Secret meeting? Oh, they called it some executive session. Same thing. Well, can they pass something this big in an executive session? I don't know, but they did. They can't. It's in the bylaws of the city charter, right here. So what do you say is going on? Well, it looks like Ogden is trying to sneak something through that he knows a lot of people around here are not going to want. But by the time they wake up, it'll be too late. Look, Mr. Tanner, we got you the facts. Now, will you publish that story? see me? Oh, yes. Oh, Lucas, I had a very disturbing conversation last night with, uh, Mr. Harold Ogden. I am not surprised. Well, then you know what it was all about. Well, it's probably about a story a couple of our students are doing for the school paper. Exactly. Well, this isn't a daily newspaper, and I think Mr. Ogden has a right to be concerned when a student paper goes too far afield like this. John, are you saying that the students shouldn't do stories about the world around them? Well, no, just that this seems to have gotten out of hand, and I don't intend to get this school or all the rest of the students involved in a controversial situation. Well, if the students aren't supposed to get involved in local affairs, what, what are they supposed to do? Uh, open a Paris bureau? <laughs> of course not. But as far as the town is concerned, the trumpet speaks for Truman High School. And I intend to see that it speaks with a responsible voice. Now, I'd like very much to see that story on Harold Ogden before you print it. I'm afraid it's too late. You'll see, Mr. Tanner, over the years it's always been the same. Closed meetings of the subcommission, then they announce approval on another project for Mr. Ogden. And no one ever challenged it. It's always too late. People did sometimes, but the subcommission always said they should have come to the hearings and not complained later. 
But the projects were never on the agenda for the hearing, so it was always too late by the... You're Lucas Tanner from the high school, right? And this is your class in political reality. I'm Joe Angelis, the Sentinel. Pleasure. Janice Duckworth and Brad Patterson. Duckworth and Patterson. Oh, yes. Congratulations, kids. I enjoyed your piece. And you're here to dig up some more skeletons, right? We wanted to show Mr. Tanner that... That we spelled all the names right. That's all. Oh, yeah. Sure. <clears throat> we might all be onto something here, you know. There's a fairly strong opinion that your paper should have reported the same facts the students did a long time ago. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Concerning political realities, Mr. Tanner, you know that a small-town newspaper can cover garden clubs and the war in the Middle East. Nothing in between. It doesn't have to be that way. It's a free press. You'll learn. But God bless more power to you. Hey, how did you kids ever get started on that big cheese, Harold Duncan? You know, that's the story in this town. Those two kids. I'm going to do a profile on you two. How about... No, that's not the point. Not at all. Would you want a profile on you? I thought everybody wanted to be a star these days. Not everybody, Mr. Angelus. Well, if you'll excuse us, we've got some work to do. It's nice meeting. Say, I think that we ought to combine forces. Yes, we all have different sources of information. Why don't we all get together and make a dynamite story? What do you say? Thanks, Mr. Angelus. I'm sure you could teach us a lot. But we'd rather do it ourselves. Are you looking for me? A uh, lady who lives next door said you'd be out here in the park. That's my grandma. Your grandma. You must be uh, Glendon. Say, Glendon, I saw an ice cream cart up there at the corner. My treat. Okay? Sure. If you want to talk to Lucas in private. <laughs> Smart kid. Mr. Ogden, what's on your mind? Al. I want to ask your opinion on something. I was having uh, lunch with some guys. We got to uh, talking about the school budget. Is that right? One of the guys, who's uh, very close to the school board, was saying how some of the frills should be cut out. Well, say drama. Now, I like drama, but do we need it when you stack it up against a bread and butter subject? Well, life can be pretty grim without the uh, frills. Oh, I know. But do we need them in school? Well, take uh, that newspaper. Now, is that really serving the public interest? Are the kids learning something they're gonna use later in life? All those are questions you have to ask. You must have read the latest edition. Yes, I did. And it upset me, especially after that talk that we had the other day. Mr. Ogden, was there anything in that story that wasn't the truth? That's not the point. I don't intend to have my affairs spread all over town as if they were public business. I thought you understood that. You know, I'm really afraid that that budget is going to be very streamlined next year. You understand? Yes, I understand. Okay. Oh, <laughs> those kids were at the Hall of Records today. Now, they've had their fun. I don't want to see anything else in print. Hey, Brad. Hi. Hey, uh, you still want to talk to my mother about Mr. Ogden? Oh, do I? Listen, she said she'll talk to you this afternoon. Uh, can you come by at 4? Sure, sure, we'll be there. Good. Hey, Mr. Tanner. What are you doing this afternoon? Janice Duckworth and Brad Hello. Patterson. Hi. Hello. Won't you come in? Thank you. Jimmy told me you were coming. Would you like some lemonade? No, thank you. Not for me. Won't you sit down? Thank you. 
We'd like to talk about Harold Ogden. Oh, Mr. Ogden, he's a very nice man. Did Jimmy tell you what this is about? Yes, he told me. And I said, well, Mr. Ogden won't defend himself if he thinks he's involving other people. Well, he's been doing a pretty good job so far. Well, not good enough. Well, it looks like he's done something wrong. And I think it's about time the truth came out about the people who are really doing downright shady things. Such as? Well, I'm a bookkeeper for Mr. Ogden for 12 years now. And it's been going on for as long as I've been there. What's been going on? These checks. They're supposed to be just for expenses, for various conventions and inspection tours and all of that. Mr. Ogden pays for members of the Zoning Redevelopment Subcommission to take these trips. Now, that's bribery. Now, don't you blame him. They're the ones taking all they can get. Poor Mr. Ogden just has to go along with it. Is there some kind of record of these transactions? Yes, Jimmy said you might want to see some carbon copies of the letters. Do you have them here? Yes. Could we see them now? I don't think I want to see them. My family. We know these people. Honey, that's the way life is. I don't want it to be this way. Well, right now, maybe we can change it a little. Could we see that file, please? You can have it. I don't want the thing in the house anymore. John, fair warning this time. When the paper comes out tomorrow, there's going to be some flack. Well, the flack is already here. I think you'd better come in, Lucas. Good morning, Mr. Tanner. Good morning. Have you ever had any experience hiring people? No, I can't say as I have. You know, when you pay a lot of taxes to a community that you love, when you provide jobs for a lot of people, when you work very hard trying to make the world run a little faster, a little smoother for everyone. Now, you don't have any experience with anything like that, do you, Mr. Tanner? I pay my taxes. Oh, really? Well, you know, last night I had a very upsetting experience. I found that one of my trusted employees had copied some of my files. Of course, I'll never be able to trust that employee again. So I've had to fire Hazel Alcott. Mrs. Alcott thought she was doing you a favor. Because of you. Because of your meddling. She was trying to help you by being honest. I'm sorry you can't recognize that. Are you accusing me of doing something dishonest? Read it in the paper. I think not, Lucas. Oh, no. Go ahead. Let Mr. Tanner and his little newspaper hurt the town and ruin the reputation of some very decent people. You go right ahead. Lucas, for now, I'm suspending publication of the paper. John, you can't do that. These are local political matters that do not involve the student body. And when I permit the paper to resume publication, I intend to personally review every edition. Censor every edition. I mean to carry out my obligations as principal of this school. What about our obligations to our students? What we teach them? That the press shall not be abridged. Do we add a small amendment? The press is free as long as it's convenient? I'm sorry, Lucas. Now, there's more than one paper in this town. Go. <clears throat> what do you want? You said we should all share any breaks in the Ogden story. Forget it. I don't even want to hear about it. I might cry. You want to explain that, Joe? You want me to lose my job, too? Of course not. This is news. It matters to this town, Mr. Angelus. Now, look, kids, I will admit I had a little hope that this story might open something up for me. You know, bigger newspaper, St. Louis somewhere. But don't kid yourselves. This story will never be printed in this town. Why not? How can I make you understand? Look, you kids have got your heads up in the clouds. 
Oh, yes, the air smells sweet up there. Now, my nose is closer to the ground. It smells earthier, more realistic. You scared? Now, that is one way of putting it. I know my job isn't very much, but newspaper work is hard to come by these days. And a man has to do what he can to keep body and soul together, right? At least body. Good luck. Hey, Mr. Angelo. Brad, let him go. I can't believe it. I don't understand how people can just fold up like this. What are they afraid of? Why? You saw what happened to Mrs. Alcott. Obviously, Joe got the word. What kind of a world is it? Come on, what'd you think it was like? Everybody's either a chicken or a fox. And that's never gonna change. What do you want to do? Give up? Well, what good is the story if we don't have a paper to print it in? Well, maybe the town needs another paper, one that's willing to share the facts about Mr. Ogden. You have something in mind? Well, I know where to rent a mimeograph machine. I already have a typewriter. Hey, are you serious? You want us to start our own newspaper? Why not? They're not gonna shut this paper down. I own the building. <laughs> Hey, Glenn, wake up. Mm. Hey, it's almost 6 o'clock in the morning. The day's almost over. Mm. Okay, oh, what are you doing? Oh. Come on, let's get back to work. Mm. Hey, this is great. I get a chance to practice being a paper boy. Right, but remember the rules. No papers in the shrubbery. No papers on the roof. And no papers left to blow around the lawns. Got it. Got it. Only one thing. What? What do I collect? You don't. This is one time the free press is really free. for you, Mr. Ogden. Have you read the underground paper the kids put out? Uh, yes, I'm reading it right now. I'm going to assume the kids are already suspended and that Tanner has been put on notice. Well, uh, this is outside the jurisdiction of the school, Mr. Ogden. I, I'm afraid it's out of my hands. Oh, is it? Well, it's not out of mine. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Boss? Yeah? You want to see a real newspaper? <laughs> right on. <laughs> Angelus? You walk out of this office, you're fired.
Anything wrong? No, 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 nothing's wrong. You're usually down at your office this time of day. Well, I just wanted to talk to you, that's all. Sure. <sighs> this, uh, whole newspaper thing, I guess I should have been paying more attention to it. Supervising it. Why? There's nothing wrong with it. You're digging into some things that young people just can't be expected to understand, that's all. Bribery, conflict of interest? Sure, I understand. No, you don't! I mean... <sighs> Look, I, um... Uh, I don't know how you're gonna feel about this. About me. My whole business depends on the bank to get loans for inventory, tide me over when things are slow. All of that, right? Harold Ogden is far and away the biggest customer the bank has. He is also my biggest customer. So if Ogden goes into the bank and tells them no more line of credit for Patterson Plastics and Aluminum, then I get no more credit. It's as simple as that. If Ogden goes somewhere else for the things that I sell him, Look, is this making any sense to you? I'm just trying to lay it out in the open. Yeah, yeah. It's making sense. I, I just didn't think you'd turn out to be like the rest of them. Why do you let him do it? Can't anybody in this town stand up to this guy? I mean, what is he gonna do, Dad? Is he gonna poison the dog and then kidnap me? This whole town! Ogden says, frog! Everybody jumps! It's, it's not like that, it's... Look, business is hard, very hard! But you're my father! why Brad couldn't come. Didn't he give you a reason when he called? No. Last time I saw him, he was talking to his dad. I asked him if he got grounded. He told me to mind my own business. Doesn't sound like Brad. Mm -mm. Hey, Joe. Uh, the press corps is assembled. Why aren't you inside? Good question. Wish I had a snappy answer. The truth is, I wasn't invited. It's an open meeting. Yes, but is an open meeting open to everybody? It's supposed to be. Sorry. Nobody's allowed in after the meeting started. Committee rules. Welcome to the club. Yeah, but the meeting's not supposed to start for another 15 minutes. That's the old starting time. They moved it up an hour. They can't do that. They did it, sweetheart. It's almost over. They're supposed to post the time for a public meeting in the newspaper. Maybe they did. Who reads public notices? Then why didn't they change the starting time on that sign? They probably forgot. <laughs> We're expecting other people to show up. I'll have to tell them what I've told you. They're taking a very important vote inside. Can't we please go in? I'm sorry. Rules are rules. Sure. When it's convenient. Hey, Joe. Hey, I'm surprised you were late. Don't they let the Sentinel in on these things? I wouldn't know. I'm suddenly freelance. Hey, I gotta tell you about my afternoon at the Hall of Records. There's some dirt under all that dust. It seems that our friend... Oh, Jerry. Here's my uh, fan club. What was the final vote? I don't smile like this when I lose. The plant was approved. Mr. Ogden, how did you manage to get the meeting moved up an hour? Well, Mr. Ogden had nothing to do with it. It was at the subcommission's request. Small turnout. Very. All supporters, no dissenters. Lucas, the only dissent is in your head. I've got nothing but friends in this town. And this is a hell of a way to treat your friends. We have no further comment. Just a second, please, Mr. Ogden. What do you think was the deciding factor in the unanimous vote? It was unanimous, wasn't it? Are you still with the uh, paper, Mr. Angeles? Well, you can say I'm still the reporter. We're with the paper. The First Amendment. Then perhaps I should tell you now. The legal papers will be served tonight. Mr. Ogden has gotten a restraining order on the publication of any further news stories regarding the zoning question or the proposed chemical plant. Any stories? That's not possible. Oh, yes, it is. Lucas, haven't you heard of a gag order? This is it. On what grounds were you given this gag order, Mr. Trevin? 
Because the case will be in court. Harold Ogden is suing Lucas Tanner and the school board for libel and slander. It can't hurt to have an open hearing. That's all we're asking. That's why we need your signature. We're interested in getting a public hearing to find out about... Want to sign a petition? ...the zoning variance. A little discrepancy. We'd like the whole community to know about it. May I have a word with you? Sure. Excuse me, please. What are you hoping to accomplish here? It's a petition but the zoning variance is granted to Harold Ogden before the town council for review. Why? Is this against another rule? Certainly not. I think the faculty should be involved in the community. Sometimes they can get too involved. Did you hear about the lawsuit? Yes. Apparently Ogden is suing the school, you, everybody in sight. I don't see how he can win. But he sure can cause a lot of trouble. And it's one way to muzzle your opposition. Lucas, we can't let this happen. John, I working. know I made a mistake. I listened to Ogden, made myself responsible to him, but he doesn't represent the community. So I'm meeting with the school board this afternoon to map out a challenge to the gag order on the press. Will they back you up? Well, I spoke to some of them. They seem to agree. The hard part is getting what I want most. The school paper published again. Now, uh, are you going to let me sign that petition? Yes, sir. keeping my chair warm in case I decide to come back. What do you want, Angelus? Two columns on the front page would do nicely. Thank you. For what? I have a petition with 1,100 signatures. I'm not interested. Demanding a public meeting of the town council for the purpose of overruling the Zoning Redevelopment Subcommission. That's 100 signatures more than we need. Repeat. I'm not interested. You ought to be. The Sentinel's required to print all public notices. I know that, Angelus. Yes, but do you know your contract with the town calls for notices of council meetings to be carried on page one? It's amazing what you can find in the Hall of Records. Let's see that. Sure thing. Now, you'll see it signed by the owner of the Sentinel. I knew he always said Gesundheit went out and didn't sneeze, but I never knew he owned this rag. All right, he owns it, so what? So you're going to carry the notice on the front page of Mr. Ogden's newspaper. And if you'll read the rest of that notice, you'll see that you're also obligated to carry the full minutes of the meeting in the next edition. On page one, where everybody can see it. I don't think a banner headline is necessary, but it's up to you. I guess you and Janice have been wondering why I dropped out of it. It crossed our minds. Was the pressure at home? Yeah. Well, that's part of it. When I first went after this story, Mr. Tanner, I was playing newspaper reporter. I wanted to be the crusading journalist. All I wanted to do was get the facts and tell the truth on paper. What do you want now? I don't know. And that scares me. My dad's worked hard to build up his business, and a guy like Ogden can just step all over him. Would your dad ask you to go easy? Yeah, but I can see his side of it. And what's worse, I can see what I'm doing to him by keeping after Ogden. If his whole life fell apart, I just wouldn't want it to be my fault. Look, Mr. Tanner, all my pressures are inside. I'm pulling and pushing at the same time. I want to expose Ogden, but I don't want to hurt my dad. And when I'm not feeling disloyal to him, I'm feeling disloyal to you and Janice. Either way, it's just rotten. Brad, go home. What? Wait for the Sentinel to come out. Show your dad that uh, 1,100 of his fellow citizens have petitioned to get this Ogden thing out in the open. Tell him it was because of our paper, the First Amendment. And then tell him why we picked that name what the First Amendment of the Constitution guarantees as far as freedom of the press is concerned. And if that still doesn't make an impression, well, ask him to come to the town meeting with you. 
you think he will? I don't know. But I think it's worth a try. Don't you? Mr. Tannen, now you've made some serious charges that reflect against this community. Mr. Chairman, I have no desire to discredit the community. That's not my reason for being here. Well, speaking for the members of the council, we think it's a fine, decent town. Good place to work, live, raise children. Yes, sir, I agree. But at the moment, there's something wrong, and I think it's just as wrong to close our eyes to it. Mr. Tanner, this council has no intention of closing its eyes to anything. Uh, Mr. Chairman, could I say something here? Yes, yeah, Mr. My lawyer, oh, you all know Jerry Trevin. Uh, he's advised me to sit still in this meeting and uh, keep my mouth shut. But uh, those of you who know me uh, know I can't do that. <laughs> I, uh, I'm just honestly bewildered about why so many people are interested in my private dealings. Now, I don't think I've done anything wrong. I, I haven't broken any laws. I have nothing to hide. What I am trying to do is to improve this community of ours uh, by broadening the tax base and providing some new jobs, uh, giving a boost to our local economy, and I don't see anything wrong with that. And I, I don't really believe that anybody sees anything wrong with that. So I wonder why we don't all go home and watch something good on television. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Chairman, may I reply to that, please? Yes, Mr. Tanner. Mr. Ogden says he's done nothing wrong, but the charges against him are well documented. First, in our high school paper, which Mr. Ogden closed. Uh, then, on our independent paper, which Mr. Ogden stopped with a court order. Now, for a man with nothing to hide, he sure spends a lot of time shutting down newspapers that disagree with him. Far out. <laughs> in order to make a judgment in any controversy, it's necessary to first know both sides of the issue. Now, that's what a free press is all about. How can you come in here like Thomas Jefferson and preach to us about freedom of the press? Now, that's not the issue before this council, and you know that. The issue is corruption with a touch of bribery. Bribery. Now, I have never bribed anyone in my entire life. What about paid vacations for the members of the Zoning Redevelopment Subcommission? Well, I think what we're talking about here is, is called uh, greasing the wheels. <laughs> or, to use another expression, uh, good old-fashioned public relations. Yes, as long as it's honest and above board and isn't meant to subvert the law. There's nothing improper going on. What you're talking about, common business practices. I mean, anybody here can tell you that. Les Patterson. Now, Les is a respectable businessman. Would you mind telling uh, Mr. Tanner here some of the facts of life? How we get things done around here? Go ahead, please. He's right, Mr. Tanner. We get things done. We've gotten into the pattern where we don't even notice the little giveaways anymore. Some of us. Not all of us. My son, Brad, was one of the ones who poked into this hornet's nest. Mr. Ogden knows that. That's why he called on me. He figured that I would be too afraid to speak against him. But I'm not. Wes, why are you saying this? Harold. I've listened to your threats. You nearly turned my own boy against me doing it. And I saw it all through his eyes. And I want to say, I was really ashamed. Now, Brad wouldn't lie, and I won't either. Yes, deals are made in this town. But mostly by Mr. Ogden. Because that's his way of doing things. Having gone along with it is bad enough. Accepting it as a way of life is intolerable. No more, Mr. Ogden. Not for me. No more.
I'm sorry to hear you uh, feel that way about things. I, uh... I thought I had some friends here. Do any of you people have any idea what I have done for this town? Harold, sit down and shut up. Mr. Ogden, the last thing you said is true. You have done a lot for this town. But that doesn't buy you anything more than our appreciation for the good in you. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the council, I ask that you set aside all construction approvals and zoning variances. In fact, any and all business conducted by Mr. Ogden with the town until the charges against him can be thoroughly reviewed. The council agrees to your request, Mr. Tanner. Thank you, sir. The meeting is adjourned. Oh, well done. We did it. You did it. Oh. Hey, terrific, Mr. Tanner. Congratulations, Brad. I'm going to call this story into the St. Louis Journal so we can scoop the Sentinel. Any comment? Yeah, just make sure they credit Janice Duckworth and Brad Patterson with the story. Will do. Well, Lucas, looks like you've won this round. I don't know what you won, though. I'm still in business. With one big difference. People are watching. Well, that's true. For a while. But people forget. You'll see. May I quote you, Mr. Hartkin? Well, Mr. Hamilton, are we going to have a school paper this week or not? You certainly are. And I'm looking forward to reading it. Good. Because I've got a couple of assignments to make. Janice, you cover the flower show. The flower show. The flower show. show. Brad, I got a hot volleyball game for you. Oh, you gotta be kidding. Uh-uh. Can't win the Pulitzer Prize every week. Right, Joe? You better believe it. But you can try. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.